Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be looking at the software and first cut of my cheap scenes C machine that I showed off a build for. It's the 2117T that I have and right now we are staring at uh, what I believe is a Chinese version of Dropbox uh, and I say that because it's been Google translated from Chinese into English at this point in time. Uh, there is a link to this in the description along with some steps that you need to get through into getting into this place. Now, as I said, this has been Google translated, so everything that you're about to see me get from here is in Chinese when it actually gets downloaded. Um, so there is install instructions and stuff in here, but as you can see, they're in Chinese and then they get translated over. So when you download these things, if you don't speak Chinese, um, you need to translate them. I think on my last video on this, which I will also link in the description down below, there was a couple of people who posted links to correct English translations that are on top of pictures correctly and everything kind of works for those. Uh, so if you need the build instructions, go to the last video and that's all over there that you can have a look at. Uh, for this video, we're looking at software, as I said before. So there are three steps here. One is the install, installation, build uh, tutorial stuff. Uh, there is the control software and there is G-code production software. Now this G-code production software, this is ArtCam 2008. Now I tried this, I downloaded this. Uh, ArtCam 2008 is a very old version of this software. The new version of this software is somewhat expensive, I found. Uh, so I did not end up using this. I also didn't have all that much luck getting ArtCam to actually work and do things. Uh, so that was not great for me. So we'll talk about my other method of doing this in just a second. But what you need at the moment is in step two here, you need uh, the drivers and you also need... Uh, mechanical engraving, Gerbil control, 0.8.1. You need everything in here. And this will actually, once you have this file and this folder, you can just click on this EXE that once it's downloaded and everything's downloaded, this will just run that software. But we'll talk about that in half a second because before we run this, uh, we actually need some G-code because this here is literally just a G-code sender. It just sends the already compiled information down to the machine and gets everything moving. Uh, the machine is all set up uh, once you've actually installed the drivers and everything. The machine is set up to behave correctly, so it knows that when it's told move a millimeter, it will just do the right number of steps and it will move a millimeter. So that's fine. Um, what I did find, though, was that all of the tests and stuff that are on this, all of the G-code tests and stuff that are around here, are useless. Uh, well, at least useless for me, because the version that I have only has a motor and a spindle it did not come with a laser cutter and all of the tests that are on this particular website are all laser cutter test files so if you don't have a laser cutter don't bother downloading all of this g-code uh, so once you've got all that stuff downloaded and installed it is actually time to look at creating some g-code so let's have a look at that so this in front of me is how we're going to do very quick and easy g-code exporting for our little CNC machine. So this is Easel by Inventables. Now, if you go to inventables.com and click through to Easel, you can get into this software. Uh, it is free to use, but you do need to sign up to their website and have an account with them and all that kind of stuff. But as I mentioned, this is a ridiculously easy uh, system to use to do this. Now, uh, it can actually run a machine directly from the web browser and you can set up your machine through here. However, I found that for this particular machine that I'm using, it doesn't actually do that. And uh, the thing that they allow you to download and install that's supposed to control the machine does not do that because uh, this machine or this software is actually designed for Inventable's own CNC machines. They just generously allow people to generate G-code um, with this software. So what we're going to be doing is we're using this generate g-code to actually generate the g-code that we need for our particular machines. Uh, so this is a relatively easy little thing. Uh, one thing that did trip me up is the inch to millimeter conversion down in this bottom corner, bottom left hand corner over here. Personally, I'm in Australia, so millimeters are the way to go. Uh, I flick that over to millimeters and then you can change your material dimensions over here. And so the big things we need to change on this is A, 
the material dimensions, then we need to set up the material we're cutting, we need to set the bit that we're cutting with, and then we need to set the cut settings. Now, I am going to just quickly open a file that I already have, uh, which is the cut that I'm going to do today. Uh, and it's actually a copy of my logo, which I'm cutting onto a very, very small piece of HDPE. Now, this is the settings I'm personally going to use. So, uh, Easel is pretty self-explanatory, actually. You can either grab in a whole bunch of their preloaded icons, and they'll just like drag and drop onto your workpiece, and then you can do what you like with those, and you can change the cut shape and cut depth and all that kind of stuff. This is not really a tutorial about Easel. I would just recommend checking Easel out. I have jumped into this and within 10 minutes actually managed to create G-code for this particular machine. Uh, so, like I said, just jump in and have a bit of fiddle around, but the big things are basically all up in the top right-hand corner up here. So, material dimensions, this is the material that I'm using. I've got a little piece of HDPE, which I've selected from the list here. I've got that at 40mm by 50mm by 6mm. And, I mean, it's slightly bigger than that, but I need some area to lock it down to the bed, so that's the dimensions I'm going with. I measured part way up the width of the taper of the specific bit that I was given, and decided that that was 0.6 millimeters. I think I kind of messed this up, but it did work, uh, or it, hopefully it will work. Um, we'll see how that goes. Like I said, I, I think this is a little messed up. It's probably a little thinner than that, but we'll, 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 yeah, we'll see. And then the cut settings, I have actually pulled these cut settings from other people who have made other very cheap CNC machines. These are very slow feed rates and plunge rates, as far as I'm aware. I'm not an expert at CNCing, uh, but these are the values that I tried, as I said, after having looked at YouTube and some other videos on cheap CNC machines. I tried these values out, they seem to work, or they I've, I've run the machine around with them and they seem slow enough. Uh, so hopefully that's all good. Um, now that is actually a big tip that I will give you is uh, when you're setting these things up, especially for the first cut, I haven't done my first cut yet, but uh, when you're setting this up for the first time, it is a good idea to disconnect the spindle motor and run a dry run like lift it up, don't have any material on the bed and just run a dry run. Just make sure that everything is all set up and all working okay. It's actually how I found that uh, the X direction on my particular machine is flipped backwards. So I need to work something out with that and get that all working and sensible and everything. But for the moment, we're going to leave it as it is because I think it will work with the flipped X direction. But as I said, it's a good idea to have no... Um, actual material loaded into the machine, have the spindle motor unplugged and just let it trace out the actual traces that it's going to cut and just see if it actually looks like it's kind of sort of cutting in the right directions and things like that. Because the worst thing to do would be to lock down material and suddenly have, suddenly have it jump a different direction than what you're thinking because a motor is wired backwards or whatever. Uh, so do a dry run. Now to actually get this stuff finished, what we need is to go into the machine. We're going to leave all of the top settings uh, there, but you need to change the manual spindle control to automatic because these machines do actually have an automatic spindle, so you can set that. I have set this at 4000 RPM. I'm not sure if that's right. I don't even know if the machine actually knows that that's how that works. And then went into advanced and hit generate G-code. It takes a little while, but then you can export your G-code out and save that down onto your machine. Uh, so now I actually need to jump over to my other computer and actually connect up the machine and everything and get the first cut happening. Okay, so with a lot of things downloaded and uh, dragged across your computer, you should have a driver and you should also have the, uh, the laser CNC is this file. And this is actually the uh, piece of software that sends that G-code down to the CNC machine and actually runs it correctly. Now, before I start this up, I like to get my spindle into the correct position, which is the zero position. So from easel, the zero position should be bottom left-hand corner, but as I mentioned, my machine, it's actually bottom right-hand corner because my X is backwards. I do need to fix that at some point. That's something in the future. Personally, I like to manually handle the machine around until the spindle is a paper width away 
from the zero point on the piece that I'm going to be using. Then we're going to power the machine up and we'll get this nice, lovely, humming, buzzing sound, which hopefully you guys can't hear in the audio. And then we're going to open up uh, CNCC. We're going to allow that to make changes to the computer. It will then take half a second to open up because I'm running recording software as well. So this is going to probably take just a little second. Um, this computer isn't quite beefy enough to do this, but you know, that's okay. Uh, it's not supposed to be recording anyway. But then you see up in the top here, it says uh, following serial ports are detected as the correct port. So it should auto detect the port for your CNC machine as long as the CNC machine is plugged into the computer and turned on. Uh, so it also has to be turned on through its own power supply and everything. If that doesn't happen, make sure you've got the drivers and everything installed and then hit connect. So that should connect up and say access granted. Now at this point you can use the buttons down here to move the X and the Y around. Then you can use this button up in the middle here to actually set the zero point. So you don't have to do the manual setting of the zero point, which is what I did before I started the thing up. You can do this outside of that. You can do it once everything started up. But personally, I like having it start at the zero point. It's just nice. Uh, there's also a little language drop down up here, so you can translate if yours starts up in Chinese or something along those lines. Then, with all of that done, we're going to go down into code, and we're going to hit open, that will pop up a new browser window or explorer window, and I'm just going to pick teampanic.nc, because that is the logo I cut before, I created the G code to get cut before. So here you go, it will show you the zero point, it will show you the lines that are getting it cut, and it will show you the G code. As I mentioned before, it is a good idea, at least the first time round, just to run some G code through this with the spindle motor disconnected and nothing strapped down to the bed, just so that you know that everything's going to move in the right directions. But if you have done a bit of a dry run, even if you've only done the first kind of 20 lines of G code, and you're happy and comfortable the machine is going to move the way you expect it to, then... And only then is it time to hit run.
So here we go, check out this piece. It has actually come out really, really quite well. Uh, I mean, it took about 40 minutes to do this little piece and I probably could have done it a little shallower. Also the, uh, the kind of electric lines through here in my logo didn't come out the greatest, but that is because they were super, super small detailed and trying to get some of the, uh, the swarf out of there after the cut, I actually broke some of the little pieces that were still well, actually supposed to be connected in there, but they broke off because I broke them accidentally. So this was a bit of a complicated design and that tip is not great for cutting this stuff. This is HDPE. It's a uh, plastic that's actually used a lot in cutting boards. And it's the stuff that I really want to use because it will make some really great combat robots and it has made some really great combat robots but it is a very hard material to cut. If you go too fast, it tends to melt rather than do anything else. So that's where a lot of this kind of stuff in the middle here has come from. It's kind of melted and then refused into the gap. Uh, so that particular knife blade that I used, which was just the one that came with the machine, probably wasn't great. I do need to find myself a, like a little end mill or something. Uh, thankfully, apparently those are quite cheap on eBay and places like that. So that's the next plan is to get some better tools and equipment for this thing. But also those speeds that we set up or I set up right at the beginning, they, I am not 100% sure about them. They might be okay, but they might not be okay. Uh, so this was going quite slowly. And like I said, it took about 40 minutes to do this one small engraving. Um, which seemed a little excessive, but at the same time, the machine was giving me huge vibrations. So I'm not sure if that was just the table that it was sitting on or what was going on with that, but there might actually be something else I need to do to tune out the machine. Um, yeah, so lots of stuff to look at. That's my kind of brief overview rundown of how I got this machine up and running and cutting things for the very first time. Hope that's been useful to some of you out there and I will see you in the next video.